this video, I'm going to be graphing three different linear equations in three different forms. For the first example here, I've got 12x minus 18y equals 36. All right, this particular linear equation is in what we call standard form. All right, in standard form, it always looks like ax plus by is equal to c. So you can identify your variables. Um, I'm sorry, you can identify your coefficients, a being 12, b being negative 18, and the constant there on the end, 36, being c. Now, from there, with my students, I give them uh, some shortcut formulas for standard form. When it's in standard form, I can real quickly find the x-intercept by using the formula c over a. In this particular example, my c is 36, and my a is 12, and I can real quickly divide 36 by 12 and get 3. So I know that my x-intercept is 3, so I can go to the x-axis and put a dot on 3. The formula for the y-intercept when the equation is in standard form is c over b. And again, I can look at the numbers in the equation, and I can take c as 36, b is a negative 18, and I can real quickly divide that out and get a negative 2. That tells me that my y-intercept is negative 2, so I can go to the y-axis and put a dot on negative 2. Now, technically, at that point, I could draw a straight line because I only need two points. However, let's go ahead and do the slope formula. If either that x or y intercept would have come out as a decimal, it wouldn't work as nice. So then you would need to rely on the slope. The slope formula, when in standard form, is given by a negative a over b. So my a is 12, so a negative 12 over b, which is a negative 18. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that definitely makes my slope positive. And if I look over here at my graph so far, I'm going to get a positive slope there. I would need to reduce that to lowest terms. So 6 goes into both of those, so 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 6 18 divided by 6 is 3, so I'm going to have a slope of 2 thirds. Now, if I want to verify that I have done this correctly, I can come over here and take these two dots, and I can see that by going up 2 and to the right 3, I do hit that other point. Okay, so from there, I know I have my line, and I can use those two points and graph my line. So that's the first example. Moving on to the second example, I am now looking at an equation in point-slope form. In point-slope form, you do not have to memorize anything other than what pieces of information you need to pull out of that equation in order to graph it. All right, that negative two-thirds right there is the slope, so you do have to memorize that. You also have to recognize that there is a point that is in that equation that is automatically on the line. Um, right here, this represents x sub 1, and this number right here represents y sub 1. So x sub 1, y sub 1 is a point on the line. Now, when I pull out those numbers, because of the way the formula is written, which is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity of x minus x sub 1, those minus signs basically indicate that when you pull out numbers or put in numbers into that point-slope form, you need to do the opposite of what you see. So my slope, let's identify that, we said was a negative two-thirds, all right, and my point that is on this equation, all right, will be the ordered pair. I see x sub 1 being a positive 4 in that equation, so I'm going to use a negative 4. And then the y value, I see a negative 5 in the equation, so I'm going to use a positive 5. Those two pieces of information then will allow me to graph the line. I always start with the point, so I'm going to graph the point negative 4, 5 by going to the left 4, and then down 5. All right, I will double check there. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four, five. So I went uh, to the left four and then up five is what I should have done. Let's redo that. So let's go negative four, one, two, three, four, up five, one, two, three, four, five. Puts my point right there. Now I've got a slope. It's going to be a negative slope. All right, so I know that I can go down and to the right. If I tried going up and to the left, I'm eventually going to run out of graph paper there. So I'm going to move down two and then to the right three and put another point. And again, I've got two points there. Two points is enough to make a line. If I wanted to be really accurate on my graph paper, I could go down two more and then to the right three. And I could do that multiple times and get lots of points there. All right, so I am at this point now ready to draw the line that goes through that two points. For my last example, we're going to take a look at an equation in slope-intercept form. So this is slope-intercept form. And the only thing that you have to have memorized here is that the two-thirds right here is the slope. And then the negative four right there is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept means that you're going to go to the y-axis and put a point. All right, now let's do make note that when you are graphing something in slope-intercept form, you always start with that y-intercept. That's where you place your first dot and then you run your slope. So we're going to go to the y-axis, and we're going to go down 4 and put our first dot. And then we're going to run a positive slope of 2 thirds, so we're going to go up 2, and then to the right 3, and put a dot. And again, two points make a line, but if I wanted to be a little more accurate, then I could go up 2, and to the right 3 again. And then I'm ready to draw my line. So three quick examples there, one of each form of slope-intercept form, point-slope form, and standard form, and how you would go about graphing all three of those. Definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.